mouth of the sound, Jimmy Hart. Hey, check out my new tag team, baby, Money and the Frown. Hey, Jimmy, don't forget to tell them about Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Well, you know what, I would, but you already did it. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh Show. Monty and Pharaoh, bro. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh Show. And you're watching the Monty and Pharaoh Show. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Yeah. Monty and Pharaoh. Dad. The Monty and the Pharaoh show. The Monty and the Pharaoh. To the Monty and the Pharaoh show. And it's Monty and the Pharaoh, baby. Watching Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh. What a run! Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, cut the fucking music. When you want the best in professional wrestling, Long Island, there's only one place you're gonna get it. Right here? Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs> now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. That, my friends, is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Monty and the Pharaoh. You've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Jannetty, and MJ in the house, and I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff, and we're going to rock it. Welcome to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Monty and the seen every Thursday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Welcome back, everybody, live out of Indie Music TV here out of Ron Conkoma, Long Island. Hmm. At the uh, table is none other than super producer Matt. Matt, how are you? Great, as always. Matt, uh... Farrow, want to talk about some upcoming events uh, next Saturday? Yeah, all right. Shoot. We, we've got... Uh, James, well, we, first we've got super producer Eric Sims in house oh. and his first in studio audience, uh, in studio interview. This is his first? I think so. Really now? Have, oh, you, ever, have you ever uh, YouTubed Eric Sims? I don't know if I have. It's pretty interesting. Really yeah, now? It's gonna be Wait a, a minute, show. though. I've seen Eric on YouTube with the Iron Sheik and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so he's got a lot of good, yeah. crazy stuff on there. He's yeah. Got a, he's got a pretty good story to tell. Okay. It's pretty amazing. I'm sure he does. He's Oh, my God. How many wrestlers has, has he worked with over the decades? Decades. Decades. And then we've Sweet. got uh, former WWE talent uh, James Ellsworth and Gilberg <laughs> in the house. <laughs> right? I love Gilberg. So we should have a live studio yeah. audience here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh -huh. then uh, they'll be at the dais uh, being interviewed by us. And then right. After that, we have a virtual signing with Gilberg and Ellsworth. So the fans who are unable to purchase tickets can go online during this and have your stuff, you know, ask uh, Gilberg and uh, Ellsworth some questions you and know, get for stuff signed. For the wrestling fans who live locally, this really is a treat. I mean, to be honest, you know, sure, you could go to a show at some place and be packed in together like sardines. At least that was the deal before the COVID. And there's nothing wrong with that. You could stand in a line and be shoved aside after you get your autograph. And, hey, say, have a nice day. Security makes you feel impersonal. Right. Or you could spend even less money than you would when driving all the way to a place like that. Come to a studio, have a nice, warm, intimate atmosphere, and enjoy a show. An yep. actual show, you know. And we'll make you laugh. And you'll, you'll learn something new about the wrestlers. It's a, it's a wonderful experience. So we really hope that, to see the people come down and check it out. And, uh, you know, I got I to gotta personally thank Indie Music TV. Because, sure. <clears throat> again, you know, the origins of our show, in the short time we've been doing it, mm -hmm. which is like a, maybe a little over two it's years. It's honestly been like a blink, but go on. Right? Yeah. Uh, the capabilities were limited uh, at some of these other studios, not putting those studios no. down, but Indie Music TV has given us such a great opportunity. No, there's, there's, there's more room to swim in the pool here, and that's, you know, if you want to use a 
Farrow analogy. Yeah, sure. You know, I feel like, you know, the art, there's a lot more space for to do things and try things. And that's great. That's great. And we deserve that. We worked hard to get to that point. So onward well, we go. Well, I appreciate you know? having a partner like that. You so, too, uh, man. It's, it's a big deal. Absolutely. Um, no l- fake elbows, please. Later on in uh, August, we've got Al Snow with Doink and Dink. <clears throat> can I do this once? Yes, you can. What does everybody want? Head. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I love Al Snow, by the way. Dude, by the way, that guy's jacked up. Al Snow is huge. Is he still huge, huge? Oh, he's in really good shape. Last time I saw him, I was like, oh, my God, this guy's defying logic. So Snow, and so we have two separate interviews there. Yeah. And then another virtual signing, ESS Promotions. Right, right you know, of course. The biggest no, there's no pro BS wrestling with agent. E, that's, right? That's, <laughs> we'll be doing virtual signings out of this studio. Yeah. And then yeah. time the mark out. Oh. And uh, we have former <laughs> WWE champion. No. Bob this. Backlund in studio. <laughs> you know, tell the fans out oh. there what we've always talked about since the beginning, right? That we before we, when we first when this uh, when this show was a tiny little embryo. Mm-hmm. Dude, when we were tiny little embryos, right. Bob Backlund was the core and the center of our wrestling universe. When we both first truly, truly, truly fell in core love of our hatred with professional. Straight, core you of know our hatred. what though? You know what though? I always took him seriously, super seriously, because of his athletic background, and you kind of knew he was better than most of them. No, not necessarily our Valentines and our Moroccos. But I got to be honest: when he did lose to the Sheik. After wanting him to lose to a Valentine or a Morocco all those years, come on. When he lost to the Sheik, I was shocked, but I was also actually irritated because I didn't think Sheik was good enough to beat Bob Backlund. I agree. This is how I, I felt. Bob Backlund gets the utmost respect from us as far as how we feel about right, him over the right. years. Come on, does it get any... You know, honestly, for the folks at home, The Rock, Stone Cold, there's only... Bob Backlund is almost like a Mount Everest for us. Considering is, where we started this, watching wrestling, the time deal. period, and this is as big as it comes but for the, us. But we watched him every month for years at the Garden. Understand that Pharaoh, we, we've always talked about yes, what, we guests were gonna, always, what guests are going to come in here. And Pharaoh used to say to me, I don't know if we're the type of show <laughs> I for don't, Bob Backlund. I still don't, right? <laughs> I'm a little nervous, too. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be on my best you behavior. Can I get Backlund's ass? <laughs> no! Stop it! Stop it! If he hears that, he's going to put you in a chicken wing, and you're going to be crying. It's not going to be good. Good cry. And by the way, I'm not intervening, because then he'll put me in a chicken wing, and we'll both be crying and tapping out like after revival. I can't, I can't believe you say we're crying. That's what? the hard oh, part. Dude, that chicken wing hurts. Anyway, in case you didn't know, everybody oh. out there, to the right of me is the star of the phone <laughs> club, the show, Mr. Clunk. Jimmy Farrow. Jimmy, Where? how are you, bud? Hey, I'm doing just fine. Uh, I want to mention Just Incredible was here last yes, week. That was uh, Just Incredible. Thoughts on that show? That was Just Incredible. Great guy. Really like him as a person. Uh, I loved his career. You know, I'm a big fat mark for ECW. And that was just a very... Was that your favorite interview? You seemed really... really? I, I, I came out of like, Farrell really, really enjoyed well, this I, interview. I, I kind of felt like that was a Roger Clemens shutout. You know, things were just grooving. So yeah, it felt like a good show. one. You know, it's up there with me for like, you know, the Barry Windham one we did or like, you know, the Stan Hansen or the Zabisco. That just went really well. Look, it you, went really well. You know me. I'm not big you know? on putting us over, right? I try to let the show speak just for itself. Just saying it went right? really well. Well, the one thing I will say is <laughs> every put... every interview, we always seem to catch uh, try to. a really special moment. And try I to. thought really special moment with uh, PJ, or right. Just Incredible, right. was uh, when you asked him. If he could do it over, would he be a professional wrestler? Right, yes. And, you you know, he basically said, no. My favorite line was when he said, you can't kill misery. I'm like, wow, that's deep. I was ready to go home and put on war pigs for Black Sabbath. I was like, man, damn, that's deep. Here's another thing. You have to stop making fun of Pat Patterson. Me? Yes, you. I need to. You do. You are. All right. Why? Why don't I have Because to? these guys seem to really like you Pat just Patterson. love to throw every, one match after another. Oh, every, every, hey, Farrell here, ask this question. I wrote it. It's controversial. It's about Pat Sweeney. Screw you. You're always doing this to me. What are you talking about? Well, are you going to stop making jokes? I think we have you know what? To. You know what sucks? It's, that it's we, not as funny i got to be honest. I mean, it's not going over like it used to. <laughs> it's, it used to go over. How do now you it's know like if a, it's like, going over Because or people not. would be like, ah, oh, but now it's like. No, I really like Pat. It's like, whoops. Oh, you mean with these rest, the yeah, rest that yeah, have been yeah. coming in? Not with us. No. Oh, can. so you say we need to book somebody who will laugh at the Patterson jokes. Yeah, we, That's very f- messed up of you, but okay. Okay. Huh? Well, f- that'll be one of the things we ask I them think we'll, so when we book them. Let's hand the wrestlers a script. What? So then, like, when we tell our cheesy jokes, they laugh. Oh. 
Ha, 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 ha. That would be horrible. It would be like a laugh track. Anyway. It only worked on the odd couple. Look, hey, anyway. Getting out of wrestling mode. Sorry, Pat. We uh, love you. Buddy the dog is the first what? dog to test positive for COVID-19 what? in the U.S. He died yesterday. <clears throat> Thoughts? What? Where do you come up with this? Okay. It's news. That's It is news. I think that's horrible. What about what about cats? You know I love I my cats. I couldn't find any COVID cats. And are this my the first water fish in trouble? This. <laughs> 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 what? That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I try. What do you do you, do you do you really think dogs are catching COVID? Is it going to be this is it this bad? Why not? I mean, don't don't is this don't animals ending, get dude? don't animals get cancer and cancers and stuff like that? So sure, dude, this is like a nightmare. It's never oh, it's ending. it's horrible. You know what's really strange? Pro wrestling of all things tipped me off a few years back when I was watching the New Japan uh, Network. Right, I noticed that the crowd would wear masks. Now I don't think at the time, obviously, it was for a COVID situation, but a lot of them would wear masks, and I thought to myself, boy, oh, boy, is that a clockwork orange future? What's what's going on over in Japan? Right. And now you see it just no matter where you go here. So well, it's very bizarre. I think I told you, right, you know, because I fly for, for work, and I mm. go all over the place. Yeah. And, and I, used to, I used to go, thank God I live in a country where I don't have to wear a mask, because people wear masks. Oh, you do playing. now. And it's like, oh, my God. You know what's even you weirder? People complimenting each other about their masks. Hey, nice mask. Hey, man, that mask is hot. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's 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 very bizarre. Every day is Halloween, you know, and uh, people come in and say stupid things if you're in retail or something, like stick them up and they got Are a you mask ever worried on. That you're gonna That's brilliant. Are you ever worried you're going to catch this thing? No. Why? I, I, I can't live my life that way. I will not live my life that way. I just can't. Am I careful? I try to be. I try to be, but I'm not going to let it, you know, rule me. Uh, I see a lot of people, you know, and I do wear the mask when I'm outside. I do. It is what it is. You know, do I like it? No, this is totally weird. I don't know if it's going to end for a long, long time. No, it doesn't. You know, seem the like cynics feel like as soon as the election's over, all right, it's all over with now. Well, that's if you Biden come out a, now. That's if Biden wins. Everything's fine. Yeah, right. Depending if on Biden the, wins. Yeah. That's what I'm Trump hearing. Wins, I mean, as no. far as right, if, if Trump Trump wins, will be four years. If nonsense. Trump wins, they up the ante. Hey, Corona, meet Bologna. What? <laughs> It's a new strain. It's like, what? Corona I can't anymore. It's, I can't, oh, God, who knows what And if it could get any worse. What? You know, you Are try you to watch sports. pro football? Today? I have to. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're Jet fans. Just end the season and before it starts. It, J-E-T-S. And we Go on. trade our best player yet again. Okay. Can and I, you and me had a little bit of back and forth on this because I was friggin' pissed Yeah, but you were off. also doing a pharaoh. You were drinking. You're like, God damn it, man. You were right. an angry chihuahua. It was like, what the <laughs> hell's going on? You know what? Screw this. It's gay. It's fun. You know what? Gay sucks. Okay? Uh-huh. Gay might eventually cost Darnold just so he can get him out of here. Because he of didn't bring him in. Screw you know? Uh, what I don't like about the Jamal Adams thing, there's a couple of reasons why I'm not so like this is the end of the world. Number one, the position he plays. Yeah, okay. If you haven't heard it before, well, too bad. You know? Right. Here's the deal. He's a, he's a, he's a pass defender. Uh, the two greatest pass defenders I can recall over the last several decades are Deion Sanders, your boy. How much did you love Deion Sanders? And uh, we were fortunate enough to have Darrell Revis on top of his game for years and years and years. Do I think that Jamal Adams is either of these things? Nope. And besides, what did you expect? He called out the owner. He called out the GM. He called out the coach. He called out everybody. And he not only made it all about himself and, and an extension. Even Le'Veon Bell was like, you liar. Right. You know, you, you told me you were going to stay. Yeah, but dude, you know? dude, but, yeah, but wait a minute, though. Let me get this in. It's during the COVID. There are people who are not even working right now and waiting, for, praying for help from the government for their next, you know, anything. And here's this guy doing this right now. I, <clears throat> eh, bye-bye. You're not a quarterback. You're not a guy who's going to get 20 sacks a year. Bye-bye. Whatever, man. It's you know? typical Jets, though, Of man. course it is. It's like we finally I get ain't a guy. saying that I'm happy with the organization. What, are you kidding me? I'll never be happy with them. Right. You think it's such a huge loss? What are we going to go from 6-10 and 10 to 5-11? and 11? What the hell are we talking about I'm here? sick of this, dude. Oh, they suck. They've sucked forever. Anyway, Jimmy and I would like to take a moment to show <laughs> respect to the people who have lost their lives and the people who are on the front oh line during this time. Hmm.
All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Monty Nefaro, seen live out of Indie Music TV in Ron Conkham in New York every Thursday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. A couple of shout-outs, some people watching, Nero12 uh, on YouTube, says, Monty, show us your biceps. <laughs> I can't, bro. I'm old, <laughs> and I refuse to be like Hannibal. So. Oh, Sorry about that. But oh, anyway. Hooded sweatshirt. But Go I appreciate on. the pop. That's not bad. <laughs> uh, Kevin Gosh out there says Superstar Graham shouldn't have lost to Bob Backlund in uh, 1978. Yeah, I agree with that. I actually do. Do I you think, really? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I think Graham should have been allowed to be champion much longer than he was. Sure. Wow. That's, that's t- why? Why wow? I mean, Backlund deserved to be champion in my mind, but not, no. I think Graham should have held it a little Knowing while longer. Knowing what you know about superstar Billy Graham, you think that would have been a smart move to the, let him hold on to the title? What's he going to do? He, he obviously gave it up anyway to Bob. He was going to give it up at some point to somebody. I don't think he was going to pull a Bret Hart. No. You know? I guess they were afraid of his uh, backstage uh, persona, though. That's pretty apparent. Very he was strong. Hot. He very was strong. Hot. Dude, he was red hot. He was amazing. He, Again, was, he was way before others that, that I'm do not, it today. I'm not telling wrestling fans anything they probably don't know, but the Northeast of WWE was built on the good guy champion and rotating the bad yeah, guys. Right. It's a much easier uh, was then. business model right. than having a bad guy champion wrestling right. good guys. It was a simple, and you would have a simple had to turn, model. You would have had to turn scram face at some point. Bah. And, and he was look. He was a face in Georgia Championship. Wrestling, he was he so sucked. red hot as a heel. It wasn't getting old. They could have gone at least another half a year with it. He could have been champion for a couple of years. I Monty Nefaro could be seen on YouTube, Monty Nefaro page, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, Twitch TV, Monty Nefaro page, RTF Sports Network every Friday from six to seven p.m. where their anchor hmm. show, Channel One Fifteen every Tuesday on cable from eight thirty to nine p.m. That's the Reduced. I, I, Abbreviated. Thank you. <laughs> Reduced. For early risers, we're on Channel 115 <laughs> Saturday from 6 a.m. to 6.30. 30. And on ch- Friday morning, that's Friday morning, so that's right. like a few hours from now. Right. 1.30 in the morning right. on Channel 20, you can catch Monty and the Pharaoh every Friday. And I think the show lined up for this week is Aqua Cherry and nice. Andrew Anderson, right? Sweet. All right, man. So it has not been a good time for wrestling, um, and I think you know. Again, we have a later on a, a later show in the week, so mm-hmm. you've heard this all. But um, Regis Philbin died at age eighty-eight last Friday. Philbin was best known for his work as host of host on Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Who wants to be a millionaire? Right, mm-hmm. and America's Got Talent, which mm-hmm. I don't remember for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> he survived by his wife Joy and their four daughters and grandchildren. Yeah, thoughts on that, bro? Regis Philbin, boy, oh boy. Uh Regis Philbin was loved by my mom. I'll tell you that she loved watching Regis. Um, obviously, a morning staple for decades. I think he was with Kathy Lee for twenty-five years, and then he followed it up with Kelly for about eleven. Wow, what Look a run. You. Well, I know this stuff. I don't know why I do, but I do. Regis, Regis Philbin was, was the, best of, the best at what he did. He was great. And he made it a really long, what was he, 88? Good job, Regis. You know? I, I don't know what he dies do you, for him, like, but... When someone dies at 88, do you that's kind of feel like... Time. It's like a long time. Like, yeah. Dude, I'm not going to get anywhere near that number. 88? You think I'm going to be around 36 years no, from now? No, I don't. Holy cat litter! But you, Somebody cat changed litter. the pad! You will be cat litter. Yeah, someone changed the pad! That's horrible! <laughs> yeah, but he was, he was great. He was fantastic, you know? <laughs> and I, and I, I actually found him to be very funny. And you know, he always had, very wrestlers, funny. He had wrestlers on when wrestling wasn't big. Was he also not? Yes! Wasn't he also a Yankee fan and a Notre Dame football fan, if I'm not Regis mistaken? Rocked, dude. Regis kicked butt. Yeah, he was great. Rest in peace, Regis. Just. Here's another one. Uh, Becky, the farmer's daughter, Becky Muller, uh, okay. Mullen, Mullen, better known Mullen. for her work as Sally, okay. the farmer's daughter, in oh, here's gorgeous your show. ladies of wrestling, here's died at show. a young age on Monday of age 55. Oh, that's too that's She died of cancer. That's too young. Um, she was okay. diagnosed with the disease in October 2019. Yeah, that's, Thoughts? That's rough. I mean, you might be able to tell me more. You were much more of a... Uh, I, did you actually watch Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling I, on a regular basis? I watched back? it. I channel, watched it from time to time. In New York, WPIX. It came was on it PIX? After... I thought it was Channel 9 for some stupid no, reason. No, it was, it was okay, 11, fine, Channel, channel 11. 11. Okay. Um, it is I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure ago. I got that yeah, you're right. You're probably right. Uh, it used to come on... So we used to watch... 
WWE at 12, right? Yeah. Right? Was that Channel 9? That was Channel 9 on Saturday nights at midnight. Channel no, that's 9. midnight. Yeah. But on Saturday in the morning, wasn't it on Channel that Nine might, or... That might have been a UHF situation. Okay. So if you're talking the 80s, then the weekends had Channel 9 at midnight, and right. then Saturdays and Sundays on Channel 67 from Smithtown, UHF station, Channel 67 gotcha. from Smithtown, had it on Saturdays and Sundays in the afternoon. So after that, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling All Star on Channel wrestling. 11. Right. So All Star okay. Wrestling, and then Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Okay. We had uh, Hollywood in studio. Right. Um, well, Hollywood was one of the uh, biggest, bigger names. She was yeah. one of the... Well, who, who was the... Who was the the big the big wrestler? What was her name? The Hawaiian one. I she think, was. Right? That's the Mount one. Mount Fiji. Mount Fiji. I remember her more than I remember any of them. Well, you know, I, I sure you know. You know? Uh, what's her name? Uh, the WWE girl. She was. Uh, mm-hmm. Come on, help me out here. Help you out. I what I got? I got. You're the women's wrestling fan. Help. I help keep, you Victoria out. keeps coming to my head. If anyone gets the name, right. but uh, you know, right? Whatever. Well, wasn't Victoria the one? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was taking a guess. How's but, Bad News Brown? <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I can't anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, anyway, rest in peace. Oh, that's uh, awful. It's such a young age, man. Yeah, Terrible. That's, that's bad. And then money. it gets a little worse. What? What now? Pat LaRue, a former wrestler in the NWA and the Jim Croc- Proc- Crockett promotion, Croc. and the AWA passed away. Okay. The, past, uh, the passing was first made public by Brittany Brown on Another social media. One. It is not known what LaRue passed away from, but PWI Insider is reporting that she was experiencing health issues related to her liver. Oy. She was either 50 or 51 years Jeez. old. LaRue broke into wrestling in 1986 Who after trained being trained her? by Killer Kowalski. Wow. Her first big moment came later in the year when she com- competed in the Battle Royal in the AWA Wrestle Rock, which she won- was won by Sherry Martell. Nice. You remember Wrestle Rock, right? Yes, I do. I do. I remember there was a lot of empty seats. Was it really? Am I thinking about the right one? I think you're not. Didn't they play in some giant place that they just absolutely couldn't fill? I, well, you might be right. Now, now you're saying it. You, you know, know, I mean, the camera work was fine, and then they would pan back, and it would be like, whoa, guys. You know? I remember Russell Rock, because I think, wasn't that Freebirds and the Road mm-hmm. Warriors, I think? Mm-hmm. And then uh, your favorite uh, rock and roll, Buck Zumhoff. And Brad Reingans. What do you mean my favorite rock and roll, Buck Zumhoff? The guy's a total perv. He's my favorite. Thanks a lot, Mike. There you go again. There you go again. Boy, he turned out to be a real zombie. Right, well, they say deaths happen in four, but... What? Um, what now? Big Slam Vader, this a.k.a. Crybaby Waldo, passes away at age 54. Dude, the 50s are not... Walt right McDonald, now. better known as Big Slam Vader and Crybaby Waldo, wrestled for a number of territories in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Hmm. IPWA and also CZW. Hmm. Uh, CZW... I was. I'm not a big independent guy, as you I've, know. I've watched some CCW. CCW for me is. Uh, That's where Moxley in, came through there, right? And the wrestler, right, was CCW, was it not? Eh, he might have been based on some aspects of CCW. No, I think they did it like a yeah, show might, there. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't you know. know. I mean, yeah. hey, but did it, I tell you, Jim Cor- Cornette hates the wrestler. No, you did not. He hates that movie. Get out of here. Well, because he doesn't think it's an accurate representation of what he considers traditional wrestling. That whole thing with the glass and, you know, when he was wrestling, who was the... uh, Well, they were were showing different forms of wrestling, right? Right. Straight old school wrestling. But to Cornette, yeah, I guess Cornette just hates the whole ECW. He blames ECW for poisoning wrestling. He does. Who he, do you blame for poisoning wrestling? Well, if if you want to get technical, aspects of ECW, aspects of the Attitude Era, uh, you know, some of Vince Russo's approach in writing and uh, some of Heyman's approach in hardcore absolutely, irreversibly changed the face of how we took a standard pro wrestling program to be. So, yeah, it might have been the beginning of a, a massive shift in, in kind of what we see today. You know, instead of uh, storylines, it's almost like a spot fest. You know, whether you're going through a table or you're doing a flip along the lines of a gold medalist uh, gymnast, uh, that seems to be what well, we got to. Finishers question, happened in though. the first ma- did what I was really the, not. What was the first? I kind of thought I kind of did. You did, but. Very complexly, too, what, but go what, on. What was. <laughs> what was. <laughs> go on. I'll what, give you a roadmap for the answer. Go on. What was the spark that yeah. turned around? I'm, I know what the answer is because I think you've mentioned it before. So well, I think you hit it head on. When okay. Stone Cold yeah. started using what? That's when it fell That apart. was definitely part of things that have changed. That's when crowds got so involved that they started to take over shows. So that's another aspect. 
You know, this is a very complicated answer, quite honestly. A bunch of things contributed to the way we've seen pro wrestling change from when we were to kids me, there's nothing wrong to what with, we look at today. There's nothing wrong with the hardcore match. There's nothing wrong with no. all the different types of matches. I love them all. They're fine. Listen, again, you just had Justin Credible in. He was talking about changing I love wrestling. VCW. Again, we're going to have Bob Backlund in. Oh, my God. Uh, right? We're that's, huge that's Backlund guys. Old school as huge Morocco guys. Right. Morocco and Backlund, if you watch that match. I love it. I, alone. I loved it. Yeah. I don't love it Why? anymore. I, I, because that I it's don't. bad. Oh, Armbar, I can't watch it anymore. I've aged. It's I don't have to save attention span. Shut up. I don't get that. I watched Tony Land and Andre the Giant posture for 10 minutes. I thought it was great. What are you looking at? What are you looking at, Andre? We'll be right back after this commercial break. Yeah, we'll return. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Monty Nefaro, seen every Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m. out of Indie Music TV in Ron Conkham in New York. More bad news, Faro. This is bad news? Excalibur missing from Dynamite last night. Oh, this is bad news. After a uh, video resurfaced of racist language. Okay. This week's AEW's announced team was Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and Taz. No mention was made of Excalibur. A video resurfaced as Excalibur was using the N-word. I don't know if you saw uh, the video. I did not see the video. Kevin Owens was also featured as one of the old videos and where he used a racial slur as well. The same one? The yep. same racial slur? They, oh, that's brilliant, Kev. Go we on. have heard no word from AEW about the situation. Excalibur's absence is noticeable because of the timing for those old promos appearing online. Thoughts? Well, I have to be honest. When Excalibur is there, I don't notice him anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. Sorry. Uh, so right. As, as, as far as him using the, you know, the N-word, well, that was pretty moronic. So uh, stay home indefinitely. You know, whatever. Uh, Kevin, dude, dude, uh, that's dude, not good dude, either. Dude, what? dude, but here's the problem. He's a moron? No. What? I'm not defending him, right? What? I'm not defending him okay. at all. Okay. Big mistake, idiot. Yeah. This video is so old. How old is this it's video? Very, very old. Okay. okay. I, I can't tell you. Like, Man, does a leopard change his spots? <laughs> all right, but it's wrestling. <laughs> Clearly, the yeah. black wrestler who was part of the gimmick was okay with it. Hold on. Are you telling me that this was part of a gimmick? Yeah. An it was like. Owens and him, and they're who wrote the with angle? Two black guys. In so shouldn't it be who wrote the angle and put show. them up to it? It was an indie show. Oh, I'm so confused. I mean, now. think about it. If you ever want to make big time, maybe you shouldn't be dropping. Yeah, it's words not. A, like it's that. not a good idea. But you know, to go along with COVID now, now we've got the cancel culture idea, right? Where everybody's What's... looking for, you know, when you become rich and famous, cancel culture. Yeah. They'll be looking for you for the mistakes you've made in the of course. hundreds and hundreds of shows. Of course. And, you know, God willing, right. you make the big time. Right. Someone will pull that video and right. shit all over you, and right. then all of a sudden you'll find yourself in trouble. Right. I mean... Well, in that case, I'll press onward, and if I've made it already, I'll have a lawyer squash your candy ass. How about that? You know, so the next opportunist who tries to cash in on what we did with our hard work of what we're fortunate enough to hopefully experience, like what happened to Matt Riddle recently, he goes to SmackDown, all of a sudden there it is. You know what? Screw that. Screw that. You know, and I'm sure Matt can afford a lawyer to squash that shit real fast. So, you know what? I guess my problem is everybody's got an agenda, right? Well, of course they do. Look, you're Howard Stern guy. Look, if somebody I don't like makes it, I don't give a shit. Yeah, That's but, not my issue. But here I don't my, care. Here my, here good my good for you. Here's my point on this. I got You're a Howard say. Stern guy. You've always liked Howard Stern. Mm-hmm. I have, too. He's entertained me for years. Yeah. But that guy has used so many racial, like, he wore blackface. He's dropped the N-word. But people seem to like Howard. Right. So it's like, ah, let's not bother Howard can because I, it's part of his shtick. Can I ask a weird question? Well, how do people, people feel about when the Wayans brothers made that movie White Chicks? I guess... 
Look, all I'm saying is, is, is that it's not right in any kind of form. If that's where we're at right now and it's not right, then it shouldn't be right in any kind of form and everybody chill out. That's what I think about it. That's basically how I feel about it, you know? If Excalibur was involved in a wrestling angle, I don't even know if he should be in trouble for this kind of stuff. Well, we didn't say he was in trouble, right? It just said Well, he's you know, not on the show. Well, they probably said, take a break. Right. We don't want the heat. Right. You know, you just came off Guevara with his rape comments, right? Right. He's back. Dude, what am I supposed to say when somebody like Al Jolson, one of the biggest stars of the 1920s, has, has his entire career buried? Because he used to wear the blackface as part of an act, you know? Was, did he really think he was getting one over on, on a background he didn't approve of? I really doubt that, you know? But at the end of the day, he's done. That's it, you know? So if it can happen to him, Excalibur? <laughs> Who gives a shit? Well, then, you it know happened what? to Al Jolson! Then, well, then, you, you know, know what? Know? Shut down Tony Khan. Shut down everybody. Because Tony Khan... Everybody's full of shit anybody. A couple anyway, weeks ago, we discussed you know? about Tony Khan saying, Hulk Hogan, you will never work here because you're a racist and right. your wife is a racist. Well, guess what? Tony Khan... Everybody that opens their mouth, Tony Khan, you can't hire. Because you said you're not going to have any... Tony, you, you, it's just like... Tony Khan puts babes in bathing suits right after he suspends Sammy Guevara. Yeah, check out these boobs. I mean, how come no one What are you talking it? about? Why, it? No, except for this show. Look, if we're I gonna... didn't hear one person right. mention that except right. for us. Right. Well, if you're going to be that anal, which is where I think we're going in society right now, if we're going to be that anal, let's just go for it. No, but bro, I you was. Know? I, you let's know what? Let's just go for it. it get makes it over you with. very defensive, right? I'm defensive. Oh, I'm just right? tired. I don't, I don't drop really these type care. of words. But you know what? I was offended no. the no. fact that after Guevara talked about raping Sasha Banks, yeah. which was an old video yeah. on some podcast, I get it. But you use the you use this sensibility of putting women in a bathing suit right. in an indoor arena, right, right, right. <laughs> and no one says anything. It said they're like Vince no. McMahon's the so devil. That's what I've always find so confusing. Anyway, when it comes to movements and stuff like that, like if you're going to be out there, even as a female, sure you have the right to to, to show off your attractiveness. But if you are going to sit on a beach chair in your bikini and get paid for it. Don't be that surprised if a few guys might need a drool bib. I mean, what do you expect? You, you said it a couple of weeks what ago, right? What do you expect? Right? Put the women... Oh, you pig! Yeah, put okay, the, fine, I'm a pig! Put the women, oink, oink! Put the I, women you, back. Put the women back. Don't in parade the, yourself! The fabulous moolah really? bathing suits. Put what? Back in no, the no, no, the granny panties. No, what are you talking about? Because you know what? You, you no. know what? You can't go... You put know, them in trash bags. Look. Like, you know, like bikini cutout trash bags. Or look. I can't anymore. But don't touch. Look, but don't touch. But don't taste. I can't. Taste, oh, taste, but don't eat. I'm getting nauseous. I don't want to taste anything. But, oh, my God. But, I mean, come on. You're right. Go all the way. <laughs> Go all the way. Yeah. Well, you know what I want? Oh, boy. Now In fact, do you realize what you started? You know what I want? From now on at the sporting events, since we're going to be playing songs. Right. Let's have the national anthem. Let's have the, the, the you know, the, the Black Lives Matter anthem. Let's have, mm -hmm. but I'm not done. Good. You can't sit down yet. You're not allowed. Because I want songs played for every other country and every other background that's also been through a lot of stuff. So I want, I want uh, who's been through a lot of stuff? Like Albania. With the, you know, they've been through a lot of stuff. I want their anthem played. Then I want, I want the anthem for another country that's had it rough for their backgrounds. I want all the... We, we should just stand for two hours and play every nationality song. And I song. say everybody, even the You men, can't sit down. The, the game and, doesn't start till you need to shake. The men and the women both have to be fully covered when they're wrestling. Fully covered. Fully covered. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wrist? All the way. None about, of this how garbage. About, how anymore. about suits versus full dresses? That's a great idea. Uh, do they wear high heels? That's not right, though. That's not right. That's I mean, too, destroy it all, that's just too destroy traditionally it all. dated. We wouldn't want to do that. We'll let them wear boots with the dresses. What just, do you think? just destroy it all, dude. Oh, yeah. You might as well. AEW last night. Did you Radical. catch AEW last night? Uh, I saw some of it. I see that you apparently saw all of it. What is going on? Wait a minute. First of all, Good. before we get deep into AEW, sure. can I quickly mention a couple of WWE highlights this past week Absolutely. that I thought were really, really cool? Okay? I enjoyed the bar fight with Sheamus and Jeff Hardy. Don't know if you saw it. Absolutely hilarious. They beat the tour out of each other. Very, very funny. And you're stuff. okay with them using the Jeff Hardy angle? Yeah, because I've seen it before with Jericho and Punk. We've seen this before. This was this was basically you're an alcoholic and you're a mess and you I'm gonna you know I'm gonna honestly, rub it in for the next two months you loser. That's what this was. That's honestly, what Jericho did to Punk. You can't, it takes it. We're older people. This was people. just another old it's, school. It's whatever. harder. It's very hard to offend us. It's just it. Oh, it's almost impossible. Right. That's you got to really step over a line. Dude, we were raised on Archie Bunker at the age of eight. Right. So well, of course it's hard to offend us. You know, because there's only one answer to that. <laughs> 
You know? Go ahead. I mean, come on, being raised on That's Archie. That's pretty funny, bro. You know? Uh, also, I, what I thought was really cool, please, let's get this in. Drew McIntyre's title reign is, is short-lived at this point because Randy Orton has decided he wants the belt. I don't know if you caught Randy this week on Raw, but Randy's at it again with a scorching promo. And uh, he's going to, I th- think he's going to be a 14 time world champion. And I actually have no problem with it. So, all you Randy Orton haters, once again, ha ha ha, you know, the machine rolls on and he's excellent. And I want to see him win the belt again. And he's going to wrestle uh, Drew at uh, SummerSlam. I think he might just take that belt. So, I. I don't disagree. Yeah, I think he's the best thing for business right now. I mean, you don't have uh, Brock wrestling uh, regularly. Well, we'll we'll we'll, you know? we'll get the business because some surprising news came out. Of okay. WWE. We'll get to it later on. You want okay. to go back to AEW because we don't. Yeah, sure. We don't usually give AEW. No, I see that there's here, a lot right? of so love I, going I thought, on here. Now, be honest, fans. Um, I'm a homer. I've yes. always said it. Homer meaning WWE. I will tell you though, I do enjoy AEW more than I enjoy NXT. Okay, that's fair. I can see that. That's fair. They're, they're a little more on the entertainment side, ironically, when you think it's about it. It's more my it. style. Isn't that weird? It's more my style. That the company that, that likes to say they're the independent side of things is a little more entertaining than NXT because NXT is more pure wrestling. <laughs> I think that's funny. It is pretty funny. You know, but that's, they do have entertainment aspects to them, which the AEW marks don't even acknowledge that they do have a lot of ridiculousness. But go on. What was there that um, All right, so Moxley, got you going? Moxley and Darby Allin okay. uh, defeated... Brian Cage and uh, Starks. Okay, I'm I'm not doing cartwheels. Was there anything special, or uh, uh, do you just like Moxley as a champion? I think he's done a pretty good job. It was towards the end of the show. Mm-hmm. Eh, it was okay. I, look, I hate Moxley. I got to be honest with you. I think he's he's just the drizzling shits, man. I okay, can't. I why? Because just... of his size? Because no, I think he's not I a think, small guy. I think he's fine. I, I really do. I'm not a big fan of his. I never I never was. I liked him in the Shield, but I do think he's fine. I do think he's fine. He's he, what did I used to call him? The uh, like Stone Cold, you know, Stone Cold Light. Yeah, Stone Cold I, Light. Yeah. I, I still wish Lesnar had worked with him at that WrestleMania match. I really do. I think that that could have been so much better. Did I don't they have know. a match. I they, they had a match that. at WrestleMania. It was awful. He it, squashed it, him, right? Well, he wouldn't work with him. He needed to work with him there. That's one of the biggest reasons Dean left. Dean Ambrose became John Moxley because. Because you're put in a wrestler wouldn't because work put, with him. It, no, if you're put into a WrestleMania match, Moxley wanted to make the most of it. This is an opportunity for him, and I understand that part. Lesnar, this is what I understand that Moxley's upset about. Let's be fair. Samoa Joe, a bunch of other guys, a- AJ Styles. You know, uh, I, can, I could go on and on, but Lesnar has respectfully let them get their shots in, and has you know put them over. Even in his winning those confrontations, what he did with with Ambrose was just give him little room to shine at WrestleMania because Ambrose's thing is extreme, and he didn't really get to do that. Lesnar basically basically shit on that parade, and it was a very underwhelming match. I'm sure people remember it or remember have it forgotten it because it was a very underwhelming match, you know. Uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page beat the Dark hmm. Order. I the don't gr- like the what you order. quoted them as the best tag they team are. in wrestling right now. Yeah, they right? are. They because they are. Cody Rhodes uh, wrestled Warhorse. <laughs> really? Did Trigger come oh, really? up, come up over the hill? Really? <laughs> no, but really, what was really important? Yeah, was go that on. Zach Ryder returned. Matt Cardona. Yes. And he made his AEW debut. Wow. So you know what I think of when I see that? What's that? I go, oh <laughs> look, <laughs> it's Matt Cardona. Congratulations. Really? That's what I think. Because when I look at that, I don't even go, it's Matt Cardona. I go, oh, look, it's Zack Ryder. That, too. It's not I, like, it's not like, am it's I Cole really? Nash. I, it's Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Oh. It's it, Zack Ryder. <clears throat> it's like, why? All right. You know, it's, oh, listen, these guys should wrestle you know for what, though, organizations, wait, wait, but it's not wait, like a shocking thing. Wait a know? second. Wait a second. Wait a second, though. Can I can I say this for Go Zack Ryder? Can yeah. I at least say this for, you know, first of all, Zack Ryder is a, was, it was a good wrestler, okay? Right. He, he was a good wrestler. What I don't like is, is people saying that, you know, how he got treated in the WWE, blah, blah, blah. Well, if I'm not mistaken... He won championships in the WWE. Yeah, Didn't he, did. he win the U.S. title at WrestleMania? No, Intercontinental Was title. it the Intercontinental title? Yeah, I know. It, was it a ladder match? Died. Yep. That's when that belt died. Okay. I the knew that he had died. won a fairly important championship at WrestleMania not that long ago. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I think fine. Was, maybe was they never. New Jersey or something. Like yeah, maybe they never launched him into the upper card. But I mean, come on, it's not like he had a bad career. Listen, no, yeah, he had a long career. To They're WWE. making it out like you know. Oh, he's finally free, and and he's going to do what? Nothing. He's not going to hold the AEW World Heavyweight Show. What's he going to do? He's Here finally, comes. You know what he's going to do? He's, he's going to go. Free. I've, <laughs> I've had enough of Kenny Omega and Adam Page. Here comes my buddy, Colt, Colt, Colt Cabana. Oh Colt, my Colt, God, Colt Cabana. It's like you know who gives a shit, I, dude. I, whatever, man. Hey, Zack Ryder versus Orange Cassidy. All goosebumpy. Dude, let me tell you something. Uh, whatever, man. Now you mentioned. Good wrestler, okay. but whatever. There is no way any wrestling Life-changing fan event in the really, wrestling landscape. There's no wrestling what? fan really thinks Orange Cassidy is any good. Come on, man. Oh, there's plenty this, who do. What the? Isn't that scary? Dude, the guy hey, is. He's great. Yeah, look, he's athletic. Pockets. <laughs> it's like, I like what Cornette calls him. I'm going to punch you, and then I'm putting my hands in my pocket. They did a thing yesterday it's funny, in a match. It, did, it is funny. They, he got picked up to get slammed. <laughs> Dude, I heard they were tossing around Marco Stunt. Oh, my God. Like a potato. Like That's a bag of potatoes. Thing. How are you going to have that guy in wrestling? Enough. I don't know. We should have been wrestlers. You know, folks, this is why we don't cover AEW, because you can't even take it seriously. <laughs> Orange Cassidy, <laughs> Marco Stunt. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, and your favorite, Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus. Roar. Roar. WWE. No, are you doing What? Tag rules. teaming with the fiend? I mean, ah oh, man, I t- uh, change that channel. Anyway, someone who should be in the WWE, who? MJF. Yes, he uh, accused Moxley of being cosplaying as Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> which he probably stole from us. Yeah. You're welcome, MJF. <laughs> don't don't um, say that. He'll curse us out. Actually, that'd be good. Go but ahead. it looks like it's going right. to be MJF against Moxley for the title. Nice. So you put that belt around MJF? Yes, I do. There's some interest going Come on there. Come on, put that belt on him. How great would that be? How do you feel about his uh, sidekick, Wardlow? I like it. Wow, that guy's big. He is big. Dude, he's like Warlord big. MJF, you know, and Wardra. MJF is great. With MJF that, versus Luchasaurus. We're going to take a quick commercial break. I quit. Be right back. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Long Island's number pro- one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Farrow, seen every Thursday, produced out of Indie Music TV in Ron Conkham in New York. Hmm. Farrow, according to uh, WrestleVotes' Twitter account, oh, the WrestleVotes. WWE has tried to find a location in the Northeast to hold okay. SummerSlam okay. with limited fans, yeah. but no state has shown any interest in allowing them to do so. SummerSlam was originally to be scheduled to take place in Boston, Massachusetts, mm. until the city's mayor banned large gatherings. The WWE has yet to announce a new location for the show. Thoughts? Ouch. Who's going to take it? There's no, there's nothing being done in public now anyway. The major sports can't do it. What, they're going to do it? Let's give it a shot. What do you mean, give, give what a shot? See if someone wanted to take it. No one's taking live people at sporting events right now. I mean, the NFL's not going to have people. MLB's playing in for cardboard cutouts. Are you enjoying that, by the I way? I hate that. I kind of like it. It's awful. You don't feel it doesn't feel like the same game when you just watch it. Looks like the same baseball that you watch with. You know what's pretty hilarious? Has it happened yet? When they foul a ball off, has it like gone through the head of a cardboard cutout? That's pretty funny. Has it happened I yet? It. I, don't think I so. hope it does. It goes- is high. It is far. It is. Oh, it took his head off. Oh, that cardboard cutoff going to sue. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh, it's it's bad, dude. This is can't what, do it. I'm, Yankees I, look pretty good though so far, right? So far, yeah. yeah. Gary Cole earning his money. With healthy. Uh, Helpings of the Baltimore Orioles and uh, <laughs> the Miami Marlins are not Marlins. feeling too good. No. What is that? Seventeen guys on the team. All right, flip out Sasha Banks flip and Bailey. Out. Now they all have all the gold. Thoughts? I like that. I think that's pretty cool. Didn't she win the belt by count out though? Yes. Did I see that right? So yeah, that was cool. Kyrie well, Zane, you... right? Got yeah. attacked by Bailey. Is she leaving the company? Or She's something? leaving. Where's she going? But the one thing I didn't like it was Bailey was beating her up, but it wasn't like she was like killing her. Right. They, they need to do something like the like that, you know. Dude, that Oscar they, really has to run out and help. Dude, her. either they don't hit hard enough, or they hit too hard, like Nia. 
And when I'm watching Nia hit somebody, I'm like, that's so hard. Don't freaking hurt them, you idiot. <laughs> I feel like that every I time I see Nia. Sasha Banks can wrestle, man. She yeah, is Yeah, no kidding. Great. Where have you been? Yeah, but a couple of years ago, we were talking about how she was hurting people. Nah, she was hurting herself. Hurting people? She was trying too hard. She was diving through ropes. She was hurting her herself. Yeah. That I do remember. She was launching herself like a lawn dart. She kept like busting her head up. Yeah, neck. Well, I'm, I think it's great. There's one. There's one person not happy with Sasha Banks and uh, Bailey having all the titles, and that brings us to my favorite part of the oh, show: here we go. the most annoying wrestling expert. <laughs> Are they complaining? All right. Are they done? All right. Amber Moon tweeted, why do we need double champions? Is SummerSlam going to be like low-key evolution with Sasha Banks and Bailey wrestling for their singles titles and also tag teams? Is that the thing? Are we just reliving Triple H and Steve Austin two-man power trip from 2001? Sasha and Bailey have done a great job with limited roster. But there are too many people sitting at their home to, to tie up titles with two people. I, I was kind of upset. The match was superb. I don't like the fact that knowing I don't like the fact that knowing it was Kyrie Zane's last appearance, and I don't know that's the way to go. Thoughts? Well, sounds to me like she's a little bit bitter. Are you sensing any bitterness in that, in that statement? Because I, I'm sensing that. Uh, I have bad news for Nia Jax. Sasha Banks and Bailey. Well, this was Ember Moon. You know, oh, for, oh, this, this was, was Ember oh, Moon. Thi- why Ember am Moon. I thinking of Nia, though, during all of this? I'm still stuck on Nia. Ember Moon said this. Okay, let's, let's reboot then. It, you know what? The song remains the same. Ember Moon will, ne- will, never, will never be what Sasha Banks and Bailey have already contributed to this business for years now. Sasha Banks and Bailey in Brooklyn several years back are the reason why Evolution ever even became a seed in the head of the creative at WWE. True, Ronda came and put everything over the top on a commercial level, but the seed was planted in Brooklyn that night, and I know that there's some people who remember that match. When when Bailey and Sasha Banks had that match on an NXT pay-per-view before they came up here, they built a foundation that the girls are now enjoying today. They deserve to hold all the belts. They have become excellent together as a team. Bailey is is no longer laughable, true or false, since she became a heel. Much better heel. She's excellent. Okay? They earned it. For those who are sitting at home, and true, there are some sitting at home, all right? But Sasha Banks and, and Bailey have earned every last bit of where they are on this card right now. Do you remember that nerd that used to live in mommy's basement that used to come visit oh, the show every so often? I'm, I'm, Didn't he say that he went? He was out there and he was in tears watching that match? Well, that was a tears? great... That was a, well, I won't go that far, but that was... A, that was a, <laughs> I won't go that far. Imagine oh my crying. God, look at that flying I'm elbow! Top, Did you see oh, that? This match I ever saw, I gotta cry. See that Hurricane Rana? Oh my God! Get me the Kleenex. Uh, I, no, no, it wasn't. Wait a minute. No, it wasn't anything uh, like that. I want to imagine. Oh my God, this is perfection at its best. I want to sit in the Pharaoh's chair. I want to sit in the Pharaoh's chair. I want to sit in the Pharaoh's chair. So basically, uh, you're telling Ember Moon to shut up? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, we want to thank Ember Moon for her input. <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the. Uh, yeah, here comes a moonsault. <laughs> Keith Lee relinquished the NXT North American Championship le- last week. William right. Regal announced that a ladder match at TakeOver 30 will determine the new champion. Where's that going to be held at? Uh, Revolution in Amityville? <laughs> <laughs> they can't get a live arena anywhere. Where's this going to be held? Live from Bennigan's! <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? It's going to be the same place, dude. Come this on. awful. Dude, I can't take it anymore either with the 30 people with masks on their face. And here was the best part. Did you catch the heckler this week? No. I wonder if Vince yelled at this one person afterwards because you know he's got all those well, plans. Well, are, these are training. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. So there's this one guy, right? And uh, Randy Orton's like, you want to know why I've had enough? And the guy goes, we don't care! I'm like, who's the loud heckler? I was like, he was like yelling stuff like, you know, I hope you die. I'm like, yeah, it's what? probably Vince going like this. <laughs> you can make yourself <laughs> as a fan. It's make awful. yourself stand Dude, out. Dude, it's awful. I hate it. I hate the way sports is right now. I hate it. Bro, carrying cross. What? Challenges Lee. Oh, I know how you feel about that. 
Dude, how awesome is that guy? And he better win! Because if he doesn't win, I hate NXT! You, you're is got, he gonna you've win? got all your... No. No, he's not. He can't. Keith Lee just won the belt. And he had both belts. And you think that Keith Lee's going to give up the belt already? Cross has got the manager, the hot manager. I can't see Keith Lee. Unless they intend to quickly somehow bring Keith Lee up to the big program or have a stalemate and quickly bring up Karrion Cross. I cannot see you, you, Keith Lee dropping thing, this you belt can't already. Bring these guys up right now. It's like, why that's would true. you bring when them you're up? You're bringing them up. You're bringing so. them to nowhere. Oh, my God. Burger King is going wild. You know, like, you know, the, what, a packed the pack the arena at the drive through dude, I got to tell you. There's nobody in this thing. Karrion Cross, I'm totally into the guy. I know you are. I friggin' love the guy. I know so. you are. He's perfect for you. He's, he's big, he's juicy, and he's got the, uh, the hot manager. His PC. Right. Well, with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We shall return. Welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty Nefaro, seen every Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m. out of Indie Music TV. We're not really an interactive show. Later on, we are on our social media, but I will mention there's okay. a person out there, Scarface Kane. Yeah, go ahead. He has this to say to you. Oh. Yeah. At least AEW doesn't shy away from being called a wrestling company. Compared to the WWE, mm -hmm. an entertainment sports company, mm -hmm. Marco Stunt should be a manager. <laughs> that's interesting. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. I, I, would, I would... Wait a minute. Can Marco Stunt even talk? Have we ever even heard him? No. And is there really anything, any big secret that Vince McMahon doesn't refer to wrestling? He's more... Hell bent on the entertainment. What part of this? You just said AEW is more entertaining. I find that ironic than NXT. Yeah. So what's the so what's the deal with the history lesson? Here's the bottom the line is Vince has been supplying more entertainment than wrestling for decades now. So what are you telling me? You're not telling me anything new. The problem with AEW you know? is this: it's not new. It's it's no kidding. It's around Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Who, by the way, to me is Cody Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not running. I like to go Cody. See Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I like Cody though. But. Jericho is the entertainment of that show. He is. He's he's definitely and entertaining. He he's when great. he goes, yeah. So what are does they gonna, AEW. What are they going to do without Jericho? That's what I'm saying without Jericho, what are you going to do? Right. You're Who's right. as entertaining as him? Who's going to fill that void? I will tell you one of the best I things know. I ever saw though was Sammy Guevara singing. Uh, Sammy Guevara, Judah, Judas. <laughs> when he's coming out, I dude. Did, I did Sammy Guevara that. makes that whole click work. He's very good. You know what? I mean, we hated him at first, but he's. He, you know what? He's very effectively irritating. What a little, what a little pain in the ass he is. He's good. Charlotte Flair had surgery. But uh, okay. rumor has it there's lots of interest from Hollywood about Charlotte Flair. Well, Thoughts? What did the, what did she have surgery on? Do you even know? Uh, I don't know what's wrong with her. Okay, well, what would Hollywood do with her? What are they think, talking about? Action talking movies about or something? The next rock. The next rock. Yeah. You really think that she could be the next? I don't think I'm so. I'm asking you. Can she be the next? I rock? don't know what roles would be good for her. I'm trying to figure that out as I think about this. Is she that great on? Pro I guess she is great on promos. She's what the? Hot. Do you find her attractive? Sometimes I guess she's okay. She's not Mandy right. Rose. Let's so let's measure this. What? Don't do what? Go on. Charlotte Charlotte Flair of Velvet McIntyre. <laughs> You're a douche. Look at those toes. <laughs> nah, that's Charlotte. Charlotte wins that one. You got anything Charlotte else? Charlotte Flair or Selena Vega? Selena Vega. Selena Vega or Bailey? Selena Vega. Selena Vega. Or Sasha Banks. Selena Vega. Selena Vega. <laughs> or, it's a landslide for uh, Selena Vega. <laughs> Mandy Rose. Wow. Selena Vega. Wow. Uh, yeah, I know. Go on. Wow. Latin, baby. Go on. <laughs> go I can't on. go any further than that, dude. <laughs> you just went to the, I went to the top Selena girl. Selena Vega's outstanding. And she's with Alistair Black, who's being written off TV, by the way. Well, by the way. What do you think about that? Well, Alistair Black's I, being written off I think off Alistair her. Black should have went on a YouTube channel and go what? have coffee and do his laundry. <laughs> what did he you do? Know, did the he, guy, wait the guy, a minute. The guy's like The Undertaker, and what? he has a YouTube channel. <laughs> hey! 
Okay, let's go and have apple. I only have, honey. Okay, let's go. I only have one question. When this he, isn't the Miz. When he started the dryer, did he kick the button? Because that's all he does is kick. That's did all he, he kick the button kick? to start it? That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, look, look, it's spinning. It's spinning, honey. It's spinning. Get off YouTube. You're supposed to be the next Undertaker. That's great. The Undertaker goes through Wendy's. I'll have a number five. This is, this is a problem with wrestling. Like, they should tell certain people, don't go on social media. Yeah. And doesn't it just kill everything, though? You know, like, back in the day, it was funny how Vince McMahon would murder the Iron Sheik and a hacksaw if they were caught with coke in the same car, because one's a fe- face well, yeah, and one's a heel. God forbid you get caught with coke in a car. Yeah, you know, nowadays, it's just like, ah, go on it on Twitter. Uh, dude, it sucks now, man. I'm sorry, man. You know, they don't know what they're missing from back in the days. We know what they're missing, but, the, you know, the audience today doesn't probably fully understand unless you experienced back in the day. Once audiences return to WWE plans to honor Stone Cold Steve Austin with something like they did for Triple H's 25th anniversary. What? <laughs> what? When, when audiences return. Going to have a podcast. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take the set from Monty and Farrow. What? I'm going to take the chairs and the tablecloth. Son of a bitch. What? Oh, my God. I'm one engaging son of a bitch. What? Way to go. Uh, well, <laughs> hold on a second. All what, right. So what do you feel about that? I think Stone Cold Steve Austin, by the way, that's when he's in my top three for a guy I just was imitating. I, I love him. Uh, that's Again, cool. Again, it's like, okay, when audiences return, who the hell knows when that's going Right. Be? Well, they should hold this at a Taco Bell in Comac because that parking lot's pretty big. What's the problem? They brought in extra lighting. They could bring in extra lighting. Do you, you know? talking like what? You I don't think there's it. ever going to be live crowds again. That's how I'm talking. Yeah, I Because I, I don't agree. believe it. I Unless the election it was like, okay, we won. Everything's gone. Everything's final. We love China too now. That may happen. Hey, you know, we're having another Woodstock. Want some acid? Corona, what's that? Never heard of it. <laughs> it's a place in Queens, and it's not doing WWE's very well. WWE's reported that 2000 just came out today. You ready for this? Oh, fresh news from All Mike these Monty. Vince, <laughs> all these Vince haters. <laughs> The this w- is WWE, WWE Financial Report. 2020 second quarter financial re- results. That's a lot of money. Revenues decreased 17 percent to 223.4 million dollars from 268 Ooh. million to the prior year quarterly. 25 million dollars. Um, this was due to decreased sales and tickets and merchandises that resulted sure. in cancellations, postponements, sure. and relocation of live events due to public health concerns related to COVID-19 right. outbreak. Right. Our, uh, this is a quote from Mr. McMahon. Our second quarter financial performance was strong and demonstrated our ability <laughs> to respond to challenges posed by COVID-19. What? It was $45 million. So what do you think? That's a strange response. I thought I thought the numbers that you're telling me that they lost $45 million. <laughs> we continue so to adapt our business strong? to a changing environment, focusing on changing the development of new content for global distribution platforms and increasing Boy. audiences' engagement, drive growth, and value Boy, to our are, shareholders. These are really fancy, fancy words for we lost $45 million. <laughs> Doesn't it seem... That, I'm stuck on the number. What, Mike Monty wouldn't be stuck on the number? Oh, but Mike, it's a... Positive uh, outlook as we work forward to uh, attaining our logistic what goals. What do you want these? With what do the you want people to do? Societal impact and financial return. What happened? What do you want people to do? What do I want them to do? Yeah. Well, I don't want them to go out and drive into you know you know buttfuck uh, Buffalo to go see uh, you know Bink the Buffalo. You know, oh, I heard he's going to sign. I'm going to drive all the way there and spend fifty bucks. You know, bringing up Lesnar. Yeah. Lesnar come back, give him the title, or you think it's all Randy Orton? <laughs> he comes back and they just give it to him. <laughs> it's good to see you, Brock. Here you go. <laughs> well, you got to blame McIntyre for this whole mess. Well, you know what's kind of you know nice about it? I think it would be interesting. You could re-explore when Lesnar uh, beat Randy into a bloody pulp back at that SummerSlam mm-hmm. that we all remember. Because I do feel Orton's going to take the belt from McIntyre. And you're heading towards WrestleMania uh, live at um, Hoolahan's. And uh, you'll have Lesnar and Randy possibly. Well, I want, I want to give a shout-out to Kevin Nash. I want to give a shout-out to Kevin to Nash. Kevin Nash? You are no longer the worst heavyweight champion in the history of the WWE. What Drew McIntyre is the worst drawing champion ever. I That's know that was hard fair. to beat. No, it is fair. He's That's drawn not nobody. Fair. How can he draw anybody? There's nobody he's coming. No, since you didn't draw since anybody. Since he's won the belt, he has not nah, brought ratings, one fan yeah, into the nah, arena. The ra- yeah, but there's a lot of things factoring in. He yeah. has not brought one fan into the arena. Are you not telling one me, person are you, has purchased are you, the ticket. Are you telling me this is like a Sheamus title reign? Is that what you're telling me? No, Sheamus actually had fans. Well, that was back when fans could sit in the, that, in the audience. Sorry. <laughs> Guilty by association. True. Drew McIntyre is the worst. 
champion. Oh, yeah, well, look wrestling. on the bright spot. The Fiend came out of the swamp for the swamp match. So we got the Fiend back now. Oh, great. That's some of the worst writing ever, by the way. Oh, my God. <laughs> Monte DeFaro is changing our format. We'll be going to do what? We're going to do public service announcements. We are? We. Listen, here's a question for you. What? Where's Lars Sullivan? <laughs> He's contemplating living. I don't know what happened to Lars Sullivan. I Basically, behind the scenes, I heard he had a, a nervous breakdown, and he couldn't handle anything, and then he ran his mouth and said crazy shit, and apparently he does gay porn, and there was all this other stuff, and Vince McMahon was like, does anybody got a, a toilet? And he stuffed him in there, and he flushed it. <laughs> but That's where is end. he? Hey, he's been flushed He hasn't Vince. been let go. He's still hey, part of the company. If you listen closely... <laughs> You think he's eating it's a $5 him. Is, he, is he eating a $5 foot long right What's now? It? It's a $5 foot long. He probably eats several. He's a big guy. <laughs> he was a big guy. He is a big guy. Yeah. You want to, maybe he needs two toilets too like Andre. You think he's going to come back? To do what? Have another meltdown? People! He's like the monster from the Bugs Bunny cartoon. Dude. I hear you monsters lead such interesting lives. Now, let's stuff, dip dude. a little hands in I the water. Seen this <laughs> People! That was ridiculous. Oh my God. That's what he reminds me of. He oh had he had people phobia. How could he can't perform? Know. Dude, I haven't seen that cartoon in like forty years. <laughs> that was one of the greatest what was that ones guy? The ever. Orange guy. That was like orange it was guy. the monster, and he wore tennis What's sneakers. I don't remember. Gerga Gergerman. Or something? I don't remember. I just remember him doing Bugsy. Bugs was doing his nails. He was giving him a manicure. All right. Anyway, next weekend is a big, great, great, big right. weekend for Monty and the Pharaoh. Of yeah. course, we have our regular show on Thursday. Okay. But then on Saturday, August 8th, we've got Super Agent Mr. Eric Sims hmm. in the studio for an interview with Monty and the Pharaoh. Nice. Are we going to bury Sims? Translation, are you going to bury Sims and leave me squirming, feeling awkward? I don't, I don't know. Think, are you? Is it going to be? Are we going to throw him a fluff, or are we going like, to rip what him What is up? your fluff? You know, like softball questions. Like, oh, you know. we're going to throw him softball questions. I'm sure he'll answer whatever he can, and whatever he can't, he'll probably try to make a joke or something. I don't know. I have to. You're, you're the one who's probably going to come up with like penile questions or something. So, Eric, you know, I mean, please. I have no idea, but I know this much. He's been doing this a very long time. I'm sure he's got some good stories. It's going to be great. You know? And you know, i got to well, tell you, Sims now. has got quite the following. A couple people from Not surprised. overseas are excited sure. for this interview. Why they not? reached out. Why not? I didn't know he had to reach overseas. I'm not surprised at all. I, I mean, how many wrestlers has he represented I over know, the years? But it's just like you're amazed that, you know, the guy's got such a great following. Look, I'm I not surprised. Right. He's, you know, he's worked hard and he hasn't been doing it for a week. He's been doing it for a long time. He knows what he's doing. And then right know? after that, in front of a live studio audience, we have former WWE superstars James Ellsworth and Gilbert. <laughs> I'm going to go nuts. I love Gilbert. Dude. <laughs> I love Gilbert. Gilbert's going to be a fun time. Dude, the sparklers, man. It's going to be a fun time hanging out with the fans. It should be. And that was where it's great, too, by the way. I love, uh, good, right? I love what he did in that women's first ever Money in the Bank ladder match thing. I was, that was great. He truly won it. So. And then after that, ESS <laughs> Promotions will be doing a virtual signing with Gilbert mm. and James Ellsworth. So for the fans who can't make it here live mm-hmm. or from out of state or whatever, right. tune in. Right. Get autographs from these two WWE superstars. Sure. Enjoy your time. Ask him some questions. It's going to be a great time. And you'll be helping out, right? I am. What right. am I doing? You're going to be with Gilbert. You don't have me cooking wieners, do you? No, you're with Sims and uh, Gilberg. And, uh, I'm with Sims and Gilberg. Oh, yeah. And uh, Ellsworth. It's quite the combo. August 29th, we've got Al Snow and Doink and Dink in well, studio. What does everybody want? What about Doink and Dink? Are you excited for Doink and Dink? Uh, Al Snow will take care of that alone, but that's cool. You know, I mean, i got to go back and watch some Doink matches, but now I'm confused. How much of it am I watching right, so from let, the late Matt Bourne? Let's, let's, let's work. No, what's the story here? I was going to ask you, so M- Matt Bourne, you considered Doink or no? Good question. i got to go back and really look at the whole history again. Uh, you know what, though? I do know this much. Recently, I saw Bret Hart talking about the Doink the Clown character, and he thought it was excellent. So Really? Bret usually doesn't like those gimmicky Bret guys. Bret is usually yeah. against that kind of stuff, but he was very like, hey, that, that was great. That was great stuff, and it was over, too, which I find interesting because you can't get anything over nowadays. No, you're right. You know? <laughs> um, Different time period. Right after that, ESS Promotions will be doing a live virtual signing again on August 29th. You get to sit and get some autographs from Al Snow if you're out of state. Mm-hmm. Doink and Dink. Mm-hmm. Should be a fun time. Nice. Who is Dink? Is this Sky Lolo? <laughs> No, Sky Lolo's dead, right? <laughs> Sky Lolo's hanging with Bad News Brown, bro. Little Beaver. <clears throat> little Beaver. Remember Little Beaver? 
I thought I saw a movie once called Little Beaver. But that's a whole other story. You and your dirty mind. What are you talking about? September 12th. It was a nature documentary. <laughs> September 12th. <laughs> Former WWE <laughs> World Heavyweight Champion, two uh, times. I'm sorry, Bob Backlund. I'm in just studio man. I'm just speechless. This is this is it. This is the end. I mean, we could basically like Call of the day. After we could that. basically move to Hawaii after this and talk to Morocco. How come you didn't come on a show yet, Donnie? You know, wow, this is insane. This is what about when we saw Backlund in Morocco at the Garden? Come on, man. Well, I'm going to tell you this. That was great. These are my plans, okay. and I want you to weigh in on this. Oh, and see if you're okay with this. I don't know. And about, Matt, already, can you I don't weigh know. on this real quick because oh. you you got to experience Virgil. <coughs> experience Virgil. I'm That's... thinking about playing hit it or quit it with no. Bob Backlund. No, no, Matt, say no, say no. I, Matt, hit it or quit. It's a good little. Oh, but he doesn't know Bob Backlund. You are playing again. Hey, you're, you're being manipulated. You Bob don't, you Backlund, don't, no. hit it or quit it. No, don't play. Don't play Could you imagine? That. Put a picture of Sasha Banks up there. Mr. Backlund answers that. He's going to go nuts. <laughs> he's going to say you are an indecent soul. And then he's going to put you in a chicken wing. You know, you, one thing that's important, we got to really start reading the dictionary because he's going to be throwing some words at us. So you're going to be like, oh, I'm okay. Me. I had the, right. I had a thesaurus growing up. He ain't gonna get anything past me. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I'm scared. <laughs> He's Mike scared. He's thinking back anyway, to the Anyway, don't back forget this Thursday <laughs> live Monty the Faro show, and then this Saturday we've got James Ellsworth and Gilberg in studio. Hmm. Monty the Faro can be seen on YouTube, the Monty the Faro page, Facebook Live, the Monty the Faro page, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, Twitch hmm. TV, Monty the Faro page, RTF Sports Network. Every Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. And then you can catch us on a rerun at Mondays, I think, from 10 to 11 a.m. Okay. So with our anchor show, channel 115 every Tuesday from 8.30 to 9 p.m. And for early risers, Saturday, channel 115, 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. The abbreviated version. Go on. Abbreviated, thank you. And channel 20 this every Friday morning at 1.30 a.m. So that's a couple hours from now. Mm -hmm. Um, Any uh, parting words? Parting words. Well, let's see. Let's just sum things up. The Jets suck. Right. Baseball's got cardboard co- cutouts that I can't wait to see one of them get decapitated. Right. Uh, AEW is a uh, bunch of uh, WWE retreads basically playing entertainment more than NXT. What else we got? It's been, it's been Drew it's been, McIntyre is in the worst champions in history of professional see, wrestling. That I still think right? that's not fair. He hasn't drawn one fan. It's not. I'm fair. sorry. It, there's nobody coming. Hey, you haven't drawn anybody. There's nobody coming. I don't know, man. Uh, you know what, Mike? After a couple of years of doing this, you might be right. Wrestling may be in trouble. I. You know what? It, it may be I'm in a, trouble. Maybe I'm a psychic. But let's face facts, though. Monty and the Fire was not in trouble. So. No, no, we're not. You know, so sorry. Um, and I, you know, again, I. We like to have fun on the show, but we sure. do want to mention again, rest in peace, uh, Regis Philbin. Yeah. Becky Mullen. Mm. Cat LaRue. Mm. And uh, that pizza Walt I ate McDonald. for lunch. Oh, okay. So, anyway, this Rough is week, Mike man. Monty. This has been The Pharaoh. We will see you again next week. Later. <laughs>